Ladies and gentlemen, I wish I had better news for you, but we are facing a storm uh, that most of us have feared. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers started building a levee system to protect New Orleans in 1965. They were supposed to have finished by 1980, but it was nowhere near complete when the Category 3 Hurricane Katrina descended on the Crescent City and the waters began to rise. Katrina was predictable, it was preventable. We could have mitigated the damage, we could have rebuilt quicker. Homeland security is a term that emerged after 9-11. And after 9-11, we saw how insecure our homeland was. The US government had other priorities, a so-called global war on terror, first invading Afghanistan, then Iraq, just two years before Katrina makes landfall. We had spent billions of dollars and countless lives in overseas operations at the expense of levees. We had been busy fighting outside and we failed to guard our own back door. We are dealing with one of the worst natural disasters in our nation's history. As the waters of Lake Pontchartrain flood into New Orleans, hundreds of residents are killed. Tens of thousands are displaced. You had an entire American city essentially wiped off the map while an American government stood by and watched. President Bush, returning to D.C. from vacation, diverts his flight to watch the unfolding crisis from 2,500 feet above. It is a cataclysmic failure on every level. Without adequate food, water, shelter, or medical aid, residents are left on their own to survive. It's a disgrace. We've been sleeping in the street for five days and nights. Somebody have to come to our rescue. I got to Katrina as a reporter three days after the storm. I had been in Iraq three weeks before. It was disturbing how familiar the scene was of this destroyed infrastructure, civilian population in need, and there being no government to meet that human need. Most of the load up on top Cold Street. And like in Iraq, when the US military first arrived in New Orleans, the health and safety of the local inhabitants didn't appear to be the mission. The crisis in New Orleans was presented as if this was a crisis of security in terms of law and order uh, and violence and that the appropriate response was militarized policing. With many of the jail facilities flooded, a makeshift holding facility is built in the city's bus terminal. People call it Camp Greyhound. Over 1,200 residents are rounded up and cycled through the jail. Basic rights are ignored. Many are never charged with a crime. Most are African American. You see, you know, the overreaction to people of color getting water, say, for their survival, as opposed to white people getting water. The white people are doing it to live, and the black people are looters. We see America's prejudices start to manifest in mass, senseless, unnecessary tragedies. With the breach of three levees protecting New Orleans, the landscape of the While survivors wait in vain for help from the government, celebrities band together for hurricane relief. During the live fundraiser, Kanye West indicts the sitting president. George Bush doesn't care about black people. When I saw Kanye West say that George Bush doesn't care about black people, I felt like he was telling me what I already knew. Well, you cannot call it a natural disaster unless you believe that it is, in fact, natural for a government to neglect its citizens of color in such a way. Under mounting pressure to do something, Bush sends in reinforcements to help the National Guard, mobilizing U.S. Army troops to New Orleans. Today, I order the Department of Defense to deploy additional active duty forces to the region. Many of the troops had recently returned from combat tours. They had been steeled and forged on the battlefields of Baghdad and Fallujah. Their training 
their experiences in some ways hardwire them to behave more like occupiers and less like helpers. They were the wrong tool for the job. Soldiers wandering around as they were in Iraq, unable to really deal with the fundamental problems that the society faced. They couldn't even rescue people who were trapped in their homes because you know, it wasn't Zodiacs and um, you know, chainsaws and this sort of civil defense equipment. It was Heckler and Koch machine guns and armored personnel carriers, all of which were largely useless. All that produces a mentality of, of warfare and repression. The mightiest government on Earth can do better than abandon people in this way within our own country. And we'll once again show the world that the worst adversities bring out the best in America. Katrina made it obvious that despite all the weaponry in the world and all of the intelligence in the world, that in the case of a storm in New Orleans, we were unable to take care of our own.